Okay, now let's look at the resistor cube. Here we have a cube of 12 resistors, four on top, four on the bottom, and four on the sides. They all have the same value R. So what we want to do is find the equivalent resistance between the diametrically opposed nodes. So between A and B, what is the equivalent resistance? Now, like I said, I've seen people solve this using y delta conversions and all kinds of other techniques and you don't have to do that. Let's just evoke symmetry and uh, solve this problem directly. But before I do so I want to tell you a little bit about properties of networks in case you don't know this that makes the problem go very easily. If I happen to have two nodes in a network that are at the same voltage, I can connect those nodes or separate those nodes. Let's look at, say, a bridge network. This is, I use this techniques in solving problem 24 of uh, Professor Walter Lewins. You could look at uh, my solutions there. But let's just say, for instance, that we have a balanced bridge network where this resistor say is 2R, this is 2R, this is 4R, and this is 4R. And this is just some resistor Rx. Well, because of the symmetry of the problem, we know that the no voltage at this node and this node must be the same. We're gonna, we have the same types of voltage divider in both legs. So the voltage here let's say is Vx, the voltage here is Vx. If that is the case, I can do one of two things. I can either connect these two nodes with a short, or I can open. Just take Rx out of the circuit completely. Let's look at what happens if we take Rx out of the network. So, because this is only because the voltage between these two nodes is the same that I can do this. Now, if I eliminate the resistor, and the reason I can do that is since the voltage between the two ends of the resistor is the same, there's no current flowing in the resistor. So, the resistor doesn't affect the operation of this circuit whatsoever. So, I can either replace it with a short or just take it out of the network, and it doesn't change anything because there wasn't any current flowing in it in the first place. So, if I do this to find the equivalent resistor resistance looking in, I see that I have two parallel legs of the same equivalent resistance. So what I have is I have 2R in series with 4R, so the equivalent resistance here is 6R. I have 2R in series with 2R here, so this is 6R. So the resistance looking in is I have two resistors in parallel with the same value, so the resistance is going to be just the resistances in parallel divided by two, since they're the same. If I have uh, any two resistors of the same value in parallel, the equivalent resistance is just one half. So the equivalent resistance is 3R that this voltage source is going to see looking into the network. Now, suppose I replace, instead of an open circuit, I just short circuited it. Again, I can do that since there's no current flowing between these two nodes because the voltages are the same. Now, what do I have? I have a 2R in parallel with 2R here and a 2R, 4R in parallel with 4R here. So I have two resistors. 2R in parallel with 2R is just 2R over 2 or R. 4R in parallel with 4R is just 1 half or 4R divided by 2 which is 2R. And now these are in series so the equivalent resistance looking in is what? It's just R in series with 2R or 3R. Same as what we had before. Now another thing that I can do with networks that I did with uh, this particular network 
when um, to solve networks to uh, make it easier for you is let's say we have an unbalanced bridge let's this is R 4 R let's call this 5 R let's call this 3 R unbalanced bridge and we have our unknown Rx and we want to find the current I flowing in Rx well one thing that we can do here is since this is all one node and this is all one node we can treat this as two different nodes up here let's call this one primed one double prime this is the same node but there's they're at, they're at the same voltage so what I can do is I can actually put another voltage source here and I haven't changed anything since the voltage from the node 1 to the reference is the same V V and I can just open that up now and I haven't changed anything as far as this resistor is concerned so now what we can do is look at this network back in this way and do a Thevenin equivalent so I get a Thevenin equivalent call this node A this node B looking this way and I can do a similar thing looking back this way I can do a Thevenin equivalent here's node B this is Rx and I can find the Thevenin equivalent looking back this way I've got a VTH1 and RTH1 RTH2 VTH2 I can easily get these Thevenin voltages and resistances because say looking back node B into the network the Thevenin voltage source is just the open circuit voltage at B which in this case would be V times 5R over 5R plus R or 6R or 56V is the Thevenin voltage and then the Thevenin equivalent resistance is we kill the voltage source and it's just R in parallel with 5R so RTH would just be R times 5R over R plus 5R or 5 over 6R is what uh, the Thevenin equivalent resistance and you can do the same thing there so that's another thing that you can do with the networks but we don't need to use this property for solving the cube now let's look at the cube <clears throat> now to solve the cube I'm going to invoke symmetry of the network to help me out now if we were to take a voltage source V and connect it between A and B and we solve for the current I flowing into node A then that same current will be pulled out of node B back into the voltage source <clears throat> then R A B will just be the voltage from A to B divided by I that's the equivalent resistance if this is that's current I current I going in so we can compute the voltage between A and B uh, which is V that I put here we could use that by uh, we could do our Kirchhoff's voltage law but I'm going to first do it another way I'm just going to solve the resistance directly and then I'll show you using Kirchhoff's voltage law now if we have a current I going in because of the symmetry of the network this current I has to divide up equally three ways because of the symmetry so the value going through each one of these resistances is I over 3 that being the case the voltage at this node mi minus these voltages gives us the voltage on these three nodes so the voltage there there and there must be the same because the voltage drop across each of those resistors have to be the same because they're the same resistance and they have the same currents the same thing going on here the current being pulled out has to be I over 3 going three ways so the voltage at this node 
this node and this node have to be the same because the voltage drops across each of these resistors are the same. So the voltage here less the voltages or plus these voltages across each of the resistors have to give us the same voltage at those particular nodes. Now, that being the case, we can connect the nodes with the same voltage together with a short circuit. So let's see what we have. I am going to number the resistors. We'll call this resistor 1, 2, 3. This will be 4, 5, 6. This will be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now let's start. Okay, now let's uh, redraw the network. I'm going to start at node A and we're going to end up at node B. Okay, starting at node A, I have three resistors one, two, and three. Okay, here's resistor one, here's resistor two, here's resistor three. At node B, I have the same sort of configuration. I have resistor 5, resistor 4, and resistor 6. 4, 5, and 6 going into node B. And these, no, these three nodes are at the same potential, and these three nodes are at the same potential. <coughs> Now, let's look at uh, node or uh, resistor 7. 7 goes from the end of 1 to the end of 4. So here's resistor 7. Resistor 8 goes from the end of 1 to the end of 5. Here's resistor 8. And <clears throat> Resistor uh, 11 here goes from the end of 3 to the end of 5. So from the end of 3 to the end of 5, we have resistor 11. <coughs> and the end of resistor 2 connects to the end of resistor 6 here. End of 2 to the end of 6 is resistor 10. <clears throat> I'll put that in a um, different color. Uh, resistor 10 goes from 2 to 6. We'll put that in red here. That's resistor 10. Resistor 9 goes from 2 to 4. So 2 to 4 is resistor uh, uh, 9. And resistor 12 goes from 3 to 6. Now, this is not a uh, planar network because there isn't any way that we can draw the resistor network such that no resistors are crossing one another and yet have a voltage source. Now without the voltage source I could. What I could do is I could move this node out so 2 goes here, 9 goes there, and 10 loops around but there still would not be any way that I could connect a voltage source between A and B without crossing uh, some resistors. There just isn't any way to redraw the network to do that. So it's really not a planar network uh, but that doesn't affect what I'm going to do here. Now, because the current's coming in split, remember I have I over 3 going each way here, and I have I over 3 coming in. So, 
the voltage across each of these resistors are the same. Hence, the potential there, there, and there is the same. I can connect it with a short. Same thing here. Since the, these three resistors have the same current, I over 3, the voltage across each of the resistors are the same. So the potential at each of these nodes are the same because it's just the difference of the voltage drops across the resistor with respect to B. So these have the same potential and I can replace those with a short. Now we can see that in the center here that this is one node, this is one node. So we have six resistors in parallel. One, two, three, four, five, six. Each one of these resistors is connected between this node and this node. So they're in parallel. So the equivalent resistance in the center is just R over 6. Remember each one of these resistors has value R. We have six of them in parallel so the equivalent resistance is R over 6. And from A we'll call that let's call this node uh, C and this D. So this is node C, this is node D, and then we've got node B. So between A and C, we have three resistors in parallel of equal value R. So the total resistance there is R over 3. And the same thing here. From node D to node B, we have three resistors in parallel. So the equivalent resistance is R over 3. We have a series connection between A and B of three resistors. So the total resistance, RAB, is just R over 3 plus R over 6 plus R over 3. This is 2, 6 plus 1, 6 plus 2, 6 or 5, 6, R. So that's the equivalent resistance between A and B on the cube. Now another way we can get this is using Kirchhoff's voltage law. Let's look at the volt. Let's just pick a path. Let's take this path going between A and B. Let's find the voltage from A to B. Well, we said the current flowing through this resistor is I over 3, so the voltage drop starting at A, voltage drop is R times I over 3 plus the voltage drop across this resistor well, I over 3 comes into this node, and again, we have symmetry. That current has to divide equally into two currents. So each current will be one half of the current flowing in, so the currents here are I over 6. So the current flowing in this resistor is I over 6. The voltage drop then is R times I over 6. <coughs> And then we have the voltage drop here across this resistor. We have I over 3 flowing in that resistor, so the voltage drop across there is R times I over 3. Pulling out an I over R, we have 1 third plus 1 6 plus 1 third. Or again, this is I R. 2, 6 plus 1, 6 plus 2, 6 is 5, 6. So the equivalent resistance then is VAB divided by I. The current flowing into the node is current I and flowing out. So the equivalent resistance looking in is just the voltage from A to B divided by I. So VAB divided by I is just R times 5, 6. So again, we end up with the same value. The equivalent resistance looking into the cube on diametrically opposed uh, nodes is 5, 6, R, where uh, each resistor in the cube has resistance value R. <clears throat> so that sums it up. So quick and easy way to solve these networks is just by invoking symmetry and making use of that fact.